so i'm glad so you know ways uh, we we are uh, uh, glad that you're all uh, uh, participating here and we hope to have a good session so how did you come to know about the first time was like uh, i saw four or five of you typed this is your first time so how did you come to know about uh, this session uh, was it through whatsapp instagram facebook or, or the newspaper okay newspaper okay i think um, three of you have come to know know about it through newspapers one of you okay i think you you've come to know through all all uh, means okay so uh, another question some of you i understand are students um i would like to know uh, if any parent is uh, part of the participants if you are a parent for kids between 11 and 15 years of age are you attending this uh, uh, session if you okay okay so some of your students i understand and some of you are parents of kids between 11 and 15 years of age okay so great so let us let me quick uh, give, quickly give you an introduction about uh, uh, mango education of course this is for someone who's new um, so mango education is a suite of clubs for kids between 5 to 15 years of age uh, we focus on fundamental and applied sciences of course the way we do it is through stories question driven discussions interaction with uh, passionate educators experts and scientists so our objective is not only to uh, teach you science or uh, help you learn science better but also uh, give a sense of uh, what science actually means scientific thinking and scientific temperament so rather you would you can put it this way we uh, focus on teaching you how to learn science than focusing on just a bunch of facts that you get to learn in your textbooks so also we would We want you guys to build uh, the kids to build portfolios and internships uh, instead of your typical marks and certificates. So that's one of the differences that we are trying to do: uh, make you build your own portfolios and internships uh, instead of marks and certificates. So uh, I think that is a very brief introduction about what we have done. And we are, as a company, we are a little more than four years old. So next year, April, we are five years old. So with that introduction, I'll quickly uh, take you through some of the basic rules. Uh, please keep your uh, videos turned off to save the bandwidth for all of us keep yourself in mute uh, unless we request you to unmute uh, please keep yourself in mute type if you have of course you will have questions uh, uh, as you listen to the speaker so please type your questions in the chat box and we will get it answered at the end of the session so now we will be giving the speaker uh, initial time to talk so without any interruptions Uh, and once uh, he is done with the session, we will open it up for questions where it will be answered. Okay. And also, this session is being uh, live streamed on Mango YouTube channel. We do have a YouTube channel uh, where we put out a lot of educational content. So uh, this is also being live streamed on YouTube channel. You can find the channel link on the chat box if you want to go back to the session for some reference. We will sh be sharing it with you. So, yeah, along with me, uh, uh, we have another colleague. Kavya, who will be uh, who is also coordinating uh, this session. So let let us get into this uh, session uh, very quickly. I think I took five minutes of your time already. So today's speaker is Akshay. Uh, he's a 15 year old uh, programmer with an interest in astronomy and computer programming. Of course, he's got a uh, lot of other interest in other subjects as well, like astrophysics and other mathematics. But I'm just giving you a couple of subjects he's most interested in: astronomy and computer programming. he deals with automation and technology based work and he is part of uh, our club called the mango astronomy club so he's been uh, a member of the club for the past 3 years so in this session he'll be discussing why coding can be an asset to kids of all age groups irrespective of their interest areas so now with that introduction let us jump into the session uh, akshay over to you uh, yes akshay you can yes uh, uh, thank you obian Yeah. So uh, I'm Akshay, and I'm 15 years old, and I love uh, coding, astronomy, and a lot of other things. So I don't know if you are you're coming here to learn coding or learn why you should code, but I'll be talking through the whole thing, including why you should code, and I'll I'll be showing you what I'm going to discuss. So uh, give me a minute. I'll start the screen share. Okay, I uh, hope you can see this. So, yes, actually, we can see it. 
so uh, here's what i'll be discussing uh, today so how i started coding then why i code then why you should code then how is coding related to uh, the real world and finally how you can start coding okay so i'll introduce you to uh, coding so i hope you can see these three images in front of you so i hope you uh, guys know what these three are right so the first one is the saturn v rocket and the second one is uh, a nova satellite it's a weather satellite and the third one is dna so there are these objects look so different right they don't look like they're related at all but actually they do have one thing in common even if it's biological or technological it's four now the saturn v rocket had such a basic computer system which was actually made by hand and they had to actually create the system that stores the data it's not like our computers or phones that we have so uh, just using that basic flight system this uh, rocket still is uh, very powerful and uh, the nova satellite it's pretty old but it's a weather satellite that orbits around the earth and it captures uh, images of the earth in different spectrums and uh, transmits it to earth when now when we receive uh, these signals they are in the form of audio radio waves but it's audio so you can actually hear it beaming data but you can convert that data into an image using an algorithm so even that is code and now you may ask how is dna related to coding well dna is nothing but a sequence you know of instructions which is in our cells in each and every cell so the body reads a part of the dna and it can synthesize protein so all of these have one thing in common coding okay so what is code code is basically just a set of instructions that is stored somewhere and is read by something and that object uh, does something based on what it reads so coding is usually read line by line as you can see here if there are like five lines of code the object whatever it is even our computer or even in our cells you know ribosomes they read the sequence it just reads it line by line in this case it reads uh, a whole line and in the case of say dna it reads it like in a pair of uh, codons so it's all the same it's just a set of instructions for something to follow so how did i start coding you may ask so i started to code about 4 years ago so the main reason i started was just to make my life easier so i i uh, study in the indian public school so uh, you get a laptop actually uh, after going 6 grade to help with the studies but the laptop's operating system was uh, quite basic it just ran a modified version of ubuntu so it wasn't that sophisticated like the major disadvantage was that it was a live boot in the sense like suppose i uh, connect to the internet the next time i restart it it knows that right? it saves the password for the wifi but in my laptop if we shut it down and uh, boot it back on it forgets everything it's like it's a blank new system you can only store files in that and once you restart the settings uh, reset again so i was tired of you know connecting to the wifi opening the browser and you know increasing brightness and volume to my liking and that takes a solid one minute which is repetitive all the time so linux uses this uh, coding called bash coding and i just started learning a bit of it and using that i created a few scripts that automatically do it for you i mean at the end of the day whatever you you are you are doing with the mouse is basically command so using those commands like in a line by line a small text code i made a simple auto script that automatically connects to the wifi increases brightness opens the browser and even sets the volume so 
So that's when I started to get interested in coding. I was curious, what other things can you do with code? So after that, I got interested in HTML coding. So HTML coding is the code which you see in most of the browsers, right? So it, it's, it's a simple code, which just renders objects on the screen of your web browser. So HTML is such a simple language but it is so beautiful that you can create anything you want. So HTML is not only for like, say I create a blog, you can create games with that, online game. So HTML can be integrated with JavaScript, not to be confused with Java, that's a different thing. So it can be integrated with JavaScript and CSS. So CSS is like the style sheet coding and JavaScript is like the, main code, which tells like, if I click this button, run this script. So JavaScript is uh, one of the main uh, things behind a lot of awesome features you see on websites these days. So the next thing is you can customize using code. So say for example, you have a, a Linux operating system. You can create your own macro scripts. Like you can uh, say, you can create a script that is called when you do a specific key bind, you know, like control alt n will perform a series of commands. So you can do a lot of customization with code. And as I said, it makes your life easier because you can create an automated scripts and other stuff. And I also do ethical hacking and I've created a few scripts for, uh, helping me instead of doing each and everything manually, like, you know, generating a list of possible passwords or, you know, brute forcing something, you need a script. You're not going to copy and paste each password manually to try it, right? That's going to take forever. And the last thing I do it for fun. It, it's basically a time pass. I mean, you get a lot of errors while you code it. You have to fix it, right? And you have to search on the internet to find other solutions. So it keeps your mind active. So as I told, customizing the operating system, automated script, and even games. So why do I code? The reasons are it's fun, as I told, and it keep, keeps your brain active. Like, you know, instead of watching a YouTube video or something, I do coding. And the best thing is coding can keep you occupied for hours at a time but you have to take a regular break. So it improves your problem solving skills because you can analyze the problem and fix it. Because obviously no one's perfect and you can never create a perfect code. So the other thing is you can share it with others. Like I've even created a, a chatting room with uh, HTML and I've given to many of my friends and we also chat on that. And the last thing is learning. I love to learn new things. I mean, once you learn specific coding language and you know how code works, you can learn pretty much any coding language within a few days. I mean, you just need the list of uh, codes available and you know the syntax and stuff, and how you write the code, like the format. Like the end with the semicolon, you need spacing. You just know that, and if you have a documentation, you can just code. So. Why should you code, right? I'm sorry you've come here for that. So I'll be telling a few benefits uh, of coding. So one thing is you can unleash your creativity. You, whatever you think or imagine can actually be put in coding. I mean, I've created, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Minecraft. So I've actually created a two dimensional version of Minecraft, like a very basic one in the browser. Like you can actually play like a 2D version of Minecraft on the browser. So that is a, another small thing I wanted to do and I did it. And it took me a little more time, but I still did it. You can create anything. Even if you want to make, say, an entertainment system or a game or even a blog, you can create it. Next thing is it makes your life easy. That I'm keep, I keep repeating it, but... You can create anything with code and it will always help you. One other thing is that it can help you with automated stuff too. Like for example, if 
So for, uh, for example, you drive the car up the driveway, then if there's a pressure sensor, it automatically opens the gate. Like it reads the number plate and opens the gate. So that's just a simple example, but it makes a life very easy, like automate control. I mean, I'm sure many of you use smart watches and I'm sure you have heard of, you know, these uh, Roombas, these automated vacuum cleaners that just uh, find its own way and clean the whole house, right? And burglar alarms, so many things, even self-driving cars. I mean, that's just wonderful technology. Like, it's a whole new level of algorithms just for driving a person without them needing to interact with the car. So that's the next level which can actually make your life easier. I mean, imagine a life without technology, right? I mean, you can't live without your phone for even a day or so. Yeah. And the other thing is actually job opportunities. Now that uh, uh, inter, uh, all the technology has increased throughout our life, I mean, we are, we are one with technology, you might say. So the increasing number of job opportunities uh, are found. Like, for example, manual repetitive uh, tasks like, say, painting or welding are replaced by robots. And there are new job opportunities coming up like software programming and, uh, you know, machine developing, designing, a lot of job opportunities. And some of them are even very well paid. So, yeah. Next thing is, how is it related to real life? So, first thing is, it's just a set of instructions, right? I mean, code can be anything, as I told. It can be DNA, it can be in the form of binary, just present in our computer, or it can even be in the form of instincts in our brain. So, any object, a living thing or anything reads the code line by line and follows it. So it's not only computers, even DNA is code. And it is heavily related to real life. Now, you may think real life is random, right? Actually, no. It appears to be random because a lot of things are running at the same time and makes it look random. Okay, so some of you are raising your hand, but uh, I'll be answering the questions at the last. Yeah. Yes, okay, so at the last, you just continue with, uh, yeah. yeah. So, even the most basic of code, like for example, if you know a baby uh, squirrel is born, it wants to find food, right? It's an instinctive. Thing. I mean, it's not that simple, but it's like a piece of code that is already there when you are born itself. So. It's present everywhere throughout uh, real life, and science is basically finding out that code, you know, the equation that connects it all, and then we can emulate real life. I mean, there are a few equations that actually define randomness. I mean, it goes on more and more, so it's a very detailed talk. So, how do you start coding? So I'll be giving you a few resources and guides. Uh, I'll be posting them in the chat later on. But you, you can start with MIT Scratch. I don't know if you have heard of it, but it's like this block-based coding. Like you can insert a block saying, move forward, turn left. So this is the most basic of any coding. You do not need to type anything. Not many errors happen because it's, it's just like building blocks. Like, Okay, you have a character. You press move forward one step, turn left, move forward ten steps, like that. It is so simple, and you you do not need to know any concept of any coding language at all. You get started with MIT Scratch. It's it's free. It's it's even available online and an app. You can create so much with that. You can create games. You can create animations. You can even create scripts to help you out, like even a drone controller. Like you can link data from an object into MIT Scratch, like a drone controller. Like suppose you know it tells the altitude, the angle, the velocity of the fans. So there's a lot which you can do with it. And after that, if you want to start with you know actual coding, which you type in uh, the code. The, a good 
coding language to start is Python. So Python is very simple. It does not have that many like requirements, like, you know, have a semicolon after each line, but it is pretty intuitive. You can add indentations to make it easier to see. And there's a whole huge list of, you know, documentation just to uh, see how Python works. And the next best thing I like about coding is the internet exists. There are so many people who know a lot about coding and there are these forums like, you know, Stack Exchange. I don't know if you've heard of it, but a lot of errors which I encounter or if I need a new idea so I do not know how to proceed, I'll search it up on uh, uh, Stack Overflow. So that is one of the best uh, resources ever. You know, you can ask people and they answer. They're not just uh, a robot because they have experience and they can help you uh, fix errors or create a line of code. And you have to choose one coding language and really work hard with it. Like with Python, you can create so many things. You can create scripts, you can create even games, you can create whatever you imagine. Like even a command line interface or a hacking uh, script or even a game which opens up in a window. So believe it or not, a lot of applications which you use usually have, you know, are made with Unity. Like a lot of games are made with Unity or a lot of, actually a lot of scripts are made just with Python because there are so many libraries which you can import and use. Like uh, it is amazing. And one, uh, I know this a website called W3Schools. I mean, if you just search, like, you know, how do I create a Python function? That's the first website that pops up for each and every coding language. So W3Schools is a good resource that, uh, you know, has a good documentation with examples for a lot of uh, coding language. And one disadvantage of W3Schools is that it's not that explanatory. So this is, you know, give few examples, you know, the syntax, how do you use it? They don't explain it that much. So if you want in detail explanation, even documentation won't cover. You need tutorials. So you uh, may ask people in forums or you can uh, enroll for online courses and uh, that'll be very helpful. So that's it. I'm going to explain through this uh, presentation, but I have a lot else to discuss. So one thing is, that's a benefit of using multiple coding languages. So basically, uh, Linux uses uh, bash coding, right? It's quite simple to code, and most of the systems come uh, installed with Python too. So what I did is, I, uh, for reasons I'm not going to tell you, I created an ethical hacking script, and it used two uh, uh, coding languages at the same time. So one which you give the input and I made that using Python. So what that does is it creates like, you know, a list of possible passwords and there'll be like say hundred possible passwords. And in that only one would work. It could be in the first, it could be in the last, it could be in the middle, we do not know. So basically I create the Python code and I give the uh, input text, whatever I know, and it creates a text file, output text file with all the uh, possible combinations and I used a shell script that takes line by line and brute forces test if this combination works so this is the advantage like with Python you cannot control like applications in Linux like I mean you can but that requires a lot of libraries and stuff but bash coding is basically how the you know the Linux operating system works so I integrated that to take the uh, output text file and use it. So this is just one example of uh, why you have to know multiple coding languages. And I'm sure you've heard of C coding too. Like C, then uh, C++. So this is one of the most basic coding and it's been uh, along with us for a lot of time. I mean, I personally do not know any coding language like a lot. I know the basics of them. I can just search up 
you know the documentation and you get what i want you just need to know how the uh, code should be entered and uh, the format which you should enter then that's basically it but if you want to start in uh, customizing linux operating system then you need to uh, go deeper so i even have a, a book myself i uh, purchased that so one of the things is uh, i'm going too deep into linux but linux is open source so you can customize it however you want like take uh, take a, a macbook or windows for example i mean you can't customize it that much i mean sure you can apply a wallpaper or cursor theme but linux you can actually create your own operating system and it's legal it's free for everyone to use so that's the catch you cannot sell it unless you have a special permission so i myself uh, have edited many operating systems to my like so that's one advantage of coding so the other thing is as i was mentioning with c coding i'm sure you have heard of the arduino right it's like this uh, mini uh, computer board which you can do a lot of stuff with and the coding is simple it's just c coding but with the amount of you know sensors and output devices that you can connect to the arduino it is such a great learning tool and remember the first i told you about the noaa satellite the weather satellite they quite outdated but they still function pretty well so what i've done is actually i purchased an antenna uh, from us and i have this device that decodes any radio signal from the whole spectrum fm radios you know airplane radios weather satellite signals all of them it can receive those signals and thus this small algorithm that can actually convert the audio data which i mentioned like the satellite takes pictures and sends it down through audio i mean it's not possible to send it digitally through radio waves because you know radio waves are analog not digital digital is like square so it sends it through the form of audio and i have a, a program obviously not made by me that decodes this audio and you know prints the image live as the satellite is passing over you know when the like i uh, have this here so oops uh in <laughs> Okay, looking for the antenna. Uh, no, my monitor got loose. Okay. Yeah. So I built this uh, contraption here. So it's nothing much. Inside is just this silver USB stick. I hope you can see that. So that's called the software defined radio and. it just receives a uh, radio waves and my antenna is disconnected right now it's on the wireless but this here is the arduino i've been talking about i hope you can see this thing which i'm holding in hand so this is the arduino uno so let me just disconnect this so you can so this is it how do you guys can see it so this is the arduino uno it's it's basically a small computer and similar things exist like the raspberry pi which is much more advanced it is a computer you can upload an operating system but this doesn't use an operating system you can upload code to this through the usb and you can code it with c program so i've used an arduino to uh, make this decoding process much easier and this even controls the cooling status because the uh, software defined radio usb thing gets so hot like within 10 minutes you can boil an egg so you know i have uh, fans attached to my box that's the only reason the like two fans and this controls the fans also so i've made so many things using arduino like i've actually made a neuro receiver so uh, basically like you know the brain sends a signal to the arm to you know contract and relax right that's how you move your legs and arms so i uh, got this uh, sensor that's compatible with arduino 
that receives the weak electrical signal sent by the brain, it amplifies it and you can get it as an input. So basically, if I contract strong enough, uh, the Arduino receives an electrical signal. And using that electrical signal, you can control anything you want. And I actually made a basic robotic arm. So if I do this in the robotic arm, that is. So that was one of my uh, favorite school projects I've done. So, and the code for that was surprisingly simple. It just receives the uh, signal from uh, the device. And for uh, say each finger, it has a certain value. So if, if I'm like this, all of these are zero. But if I fold each finger, you get a certain value. So if the value goes above that certain threshold value, it moves the finger of the robotic arm. It's so simple. The code is not even two kilobytes. It is so small. But with that simple thing, you can control a robotic arm. Then imagine the future of coding with much more complex algorithms. Like nowadays, these uh, things called neural networks are appearing, right? The artificial intelligence. I mean, those are another whole level of coding. I mean, you do a basic code, but the algorithm learns like you don't do anything more than that so that's a whole new thing like even uh you know fake arms or legs for people who are disabled those uh, are you know similar to what i've picked i mean mine was so basic but there are versions for people who actually like don't have legs robotic legs to help them walk and so many things can be done just using code so Coding is for all age groups. It doesn't mean that coding is just, you know, you sit in a computer and type huge lines of code and do something awesome. No, it's not that. So um, basically what I want to say is coding is not hard. And if you give it a go, it might help you. And it will help you. Unless you're bored and you don't want to code. So uh, that's it. And I'll be showing you a few of the... Uh, coding that I've done. So uh, give me a minute, I'll stop the presentation. So this is a small uh, HTML game that I created. Code is so small, okay? But this is a small game. I created just within 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. So uh, I hope you can see my mouse, but uh, it says click all the buttons you can. I'm remaining 30 seconds. And on the left here, there's a small score counter. Uh, hope you can see it. So that's just, you know, this blue button and when I hover it becomes red like the target. So once I click this button, the timer starts, but the button teleports randomly. So like this, but the score increases. Like this. And the timer is counting down. So it's just a simple game that I created. So it finds a random position on the screen and it moves the button to that location. And you have to try to click uh, the button as many times possible with uh, within 30 seconds. I have been sitting too many. Okay. So as you can see, the score counter on the left is increasing. And that's it. So it brings me to a new page saying game over and it tells me the score. And there's a home button, which brings me back here. So the code behind this is quite simple. And I think I'll show it to you. Yeah, so this is the uh, HTML part of the uh, main uh, code. So it has a title called uh, Mouse Accuracy. 
and it uh, this uh, line here it just links links the uh, CSS which is a style sheet. So that's what made the you know a nice color and a nice uh, color for the button. It's you know not just square button. And this is the JavaScript, the code behind the game. So the HTML renders uh, whatever I've mentioned here. So all it does is create a button. And the button has its own ID. And once you click it, this on click, once you click the button, it should change its position, update the score, and it should start the timer, obviously. So this uh, start timer is only uh, done once, obviously. But uh, once the timer started, it uh, doesn't stop. And that's it. This is just the score counter, and this is the uh, time counter. And um, uh, I'll open the uh, JavaScript. So this is the JavaScript. It's it's just 40 lines of code. So uh, I'll explain to you in uh, this. So it has a score variable, a scoreboard variable, which is basically you know, the text, and the time uh, variable. So that's the function called finish game. So once the time ends, it finishes the game and sends me to the score uh, web page once it's done. And this is the function called change position. So it just gets a random number between 100% of the screen, right? So anywhere between the screen for height and width. And it just teleports the button uh, to that point. And the function add score is just, if you click on the button, it adds one uh, uh, digit to the, it adds number one to the score. So then we have a function called the uh, update score. And it just, uh, you know, if score increases, it should render it on the text file. So that's what it does. And this, if this just uh, tells if the game is uh, finished or not. And that's it. It just, uh, this is the start timer function. So once you click the button, it starts. So that's it for the JavaScript part of it. I mean, that's the whole game. That's it. It is so simple. So that's just one example. And uh, I'll show you another example. So this uh, don't mind it's kind of ugly because I created this for my laptop screen and the scaling doesn't work on this uh, huge uh, monitor. But still, I like to uh, do the Ruby over here. So this is a timer that I've created, you know, the time itself. But you know, online timers exist, right? You just search for Rubik's Cube timer on the internet, and you, the first web page you get is pretty sufficient. But the uh, one thing I've noticed which doesn't fit my need, you have to press the space bar key to start the timer and stop the timer. But in you know real tournaments, that's just a precious sensitive pad, but you can't emulate that because you don't have one. But the thing is, I wanted it so that you press any key to start and any key to stop. So, you know, instead of pressing the space bar, I mean, you can miss the space bar, like finish it so fast and you slam the keyboard, but you don't hit the space bar and the time is not recorded properly. So that's one disadvantage I was facing on the online ones. So I created my own timer. Yeah, so that's another code. Like you just tap, tap any key, and you know it starts the timer. It uh, has seconds and milliseconds. So you need to know how accurate you are, and press any key to stop it. And you can also save your score and clear it again to uh, start a new round. So that's just an, another example of uh, HTML that I made. And actually, uh, I'm sure you've heard of the Chandrayaan two. Uh, mission to the moon uh, by India. I created a launch time for that, like, you know, countdown. So let me just show that. I mean, obviously it's long gone, like it's already launched, but this is such a simple script. 
so basically what it does is you give the time of the launch and all it does is it takes the current time and subtracts it from the time which the launch is and just displays it in days minutes so uh, days hours minutes and seconds so i also implemented the expired one because i mean it's long gone so if the launch happened it expired so uh, you know small things make it better so this is just an example of html that i created and most of the coding i've done is html and bash but i've also done uh, python like I'll uh, display this. Okay, so this is a simple calculator. The funny thing is, I mean. Why would I create a calculator, right? The thing is, I have this graphics calculator, and recently, like I don't know, uh, about a year ago, it got a new update which introduced Python into this. So you could put uh, Python codes. I mean, that's a graphics calculator. If any of you are interested, it's not a scientific calculator. So it has Python, and I created this small code. It's just twenty lines. So it's a calculator inside a calculator. That's why this line. So, you know, so it just says it's a calculator inside a calculator. So this is small uh, code. So what it does is it uh, displays this line. Type the operation one for addition, two for subtraction, three for multiplication, and four for division. So say I uh, type in the number one and hit enter. So this if statement. so it validates the input if the option is 1 then go to addition so it will ask what is the first number i input say 5 what's the second number i input 10 so it will do 5 plus 10 which is 15 so that's it so basically and if i select like option 3 i can multiply two numbers and it's just that simple so i created this inside my calculator so i thought it was fun Share with you and a few other ones. So uh, one of them is uh, this one. So this uh, is uh, basically uh, does this uh, organization called the IUCN, which is like you know wildlife conservation, and it has this pretty good database about all the you know species of you know the whole world and you know how endangered it is and all the details like. No, what's the scientific name, for example? So I actually requested for an API key. So if you if you're curious what an API key is, it's basically like an access card. So you show this access card and say, hey, I want information about this species. So then they're like, okay, you have an access key, so we are going to give you the information. So that's it. So I have this token key and what this huge just 64 lines of code not that huge what it does is it basically you can type in like say a uh, rat and it queries that to the database and gets all the details like displays a common name genus species kingdom all sorts of things like how endangered it is like you know, red alert or fine it's common Like that. So, this is just a simple thing that you know automatically asks for the data, gets the data, but the data which we get would be in a raw format. Like you can't understand it if you read it. So, uh, this also converts it and displays it in a beautiful way. So, this is a command line interface. It doesn't even have a window that pops up. It just runs on the terminal. So that's just another uh, simple code, and I'll show you a few of my Arduino codes too. So. So 
actually uh, you know have a pollution sensor for the Arduino. That is so simple. It's kind of big. I mean, doesn't need to be this big, but basically, uh, this uh, first uh, thing is just uh, you know defining thresholds and the input pin and the output pin. So basically, there's a green LED, a red LED, and uh, a buzzer that's connected to uh, this pollution sensor. So uh, what this does is it you know reads the data from the pollution sensor, and you know I create thresholds like if you only get it in terms of values from the sensor. So if the air quality is good, which is 290. And uh, medium is 310, high is 330, and dangerous is 600. So this just uh, uh, reads that if the input is lesser than good, it'll uh, switch on the green LED and it'll say pollution level low. If it is greater than good value, greater than 290, it's pollution level modern. But if it's greater than medium, pollution level medium and high is for high and of course the dangerous is dangerous and luckily I didn't sense that on the filter so that's a simple code you can it's just C programming language so that's a lot you can do with code I mean right now I showed you JavaScript, HTML, CSS, C and Python within what like it's just 38 minutes since we started and we even finished the PPT so those are a, a few examples. I, I will check if I have more. Actually, you had the game uh, built on Python. Do you have it? Yeah, unfortunately, it's on my old laptop, which is probably dead right now. I can't extract the board. But I actually, funnily enough, made a YouTube video just showing how I play the game. And I'll actually link it in the chat right now. If you guys want. I can uh, share it probably. Uh, screenshot it if you have, yeah. Okay. Uh, also, Akshay, once you're done, we have a lot of questions from. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so we'll be taking those questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I'll screenshot the yeah. game which I made because that's sure, sure. one of the only games I made using Python. So, uh, okay. This is it. Don't mind. I did not do any editing for this. It was in 2019. Don't blame me. The board is kind of cute. Background music. So I run it. As you see, my laptop is so slow. Yeah. Uh, all the using it. So. No, once it loads, so I use the arcade library to uh, program this. So it's a uh, you know, graphical user interface which you could, you know, it opens the window and uh, you can get it. As you can see, my laptop is slow. But look, so these uh, two things are spatial, and uh, the thing on the bottom is uh, the character. So you can move it uh, with your mouse and uh, uh, hit the space bar key to shoot your own laser beams. So once you no, kill these uh, spaceship guys. Uh, uh, your score increases and new up uh, uh, new spaceships now. But if those uh, red uh, bullets hit you, your lives uh, decrease. I see it just uh, touch the player and lives took in two. And I've created two levels for this game, but at the point of uh, recording this, there's only one level. It's just such a basic level, not even a background. But so this is a simple game, but it actually takes quite a bit of code. Like if I were to do this in HTML and JavaScript, the code would be much smaller and easier to do probably. But the awesome thing is Python open opens its own window and it's much more comparable. So once all uh, three lives are over, it uh, displays a game over screen and it uh, displays your score in a lot. So that's basically it. So luckily I have video evidence that I made the game. Yeah. So. Okay, I think I'll show you the ethical hacking script that I've made. So, 
I'm not going to explain what it does, but still. So basically, this you know just you know gets a username, the first name, and an initial. So basically, passwords uh, were you know generated based on this. That's my understanding. So I tried to brute force it, and it will create all sorts of possibilities. But the funnily. Uh, the thing about this is, you know, people can have their name with just one word, right? People can have name with two words or even three words, or some people just use their initial with one name. So it's a bigger process. So that is the Python code. Then I used a, a shell script to brute force it. And this is so smart. So smart. Let me just show it to you. I mean, it's nine lines of code. And so it basically takes the username and all the possible passwords, like 50 combinations, and it just tries it with each uh, possible combination until it gets the right password. Once it gets the right password, it uh, you know prints the right password and stops the game. So it's so small, but it helps enormously. I mean. You're not gonna create your own, you know, write all the different possible combinations and you know write it for type it each time and you know, get wrong password, wrong password. But yeah, so that's another example and that's it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. question answering time. I'll ask. Uh, I'll be reading out some questions to you, uh, yeah. okay, from what they have. So, uh, Vamsi, uh, uh, the name is Vamsi. Uh, she is asking, uh, please tell about the Arduino boards. So, okay. so it, it, what you can share a little bit about what Arduino boards are and what are they capable of? Yeah. yeah. So, Arduino board is literally a gateway to do anything you want. It's just a small chip and just install the software on your uh, computer or laptop and you can create a small board like you can start so simply. Anyone, even six year old, can start using Arduino. And those things are so cheap. You can get them for 400 rupees or 600 rupees if you get, you know, where to get them. And you even get kits like, you know, proximity sensor, temperature sensor, you know, uh, so many sensors. And the awesome thing is you don't mess with any circuit boards or anything. You just use jumper wires, you know, wires and connect them. And the wires are like Lego pieces which you can uh, interconnect. So uh, that's another bonus. So it is simple. And uh, Arduino is very easy to use. So yeah, that's it. So it's open source and there are many other libraries which you can use. Okay, uh, uh, there's some other questions. So on what page do we have to write those codes? Like whatever you're sharing the yeah. code. So one. Okay, so yeah, yeah I, I, I hope I understood the question properly. So you're asking, why should I type them and you know run them, right? So yes. for example, if, if I'm writing a Python code, so each code has its specific generic file format. Like, you know, if I type a, a text file, it's like, say, uh, Homework list dot txt, you know the end thing. Usually it's hidden in Windows. I'm not sure about Mac, but it's visible on uh, Linux. So the dot txt, the uh, you know the text after the dot defines what the file is. So the dot txt is a generic text file format. But say for example I'm writing Python code, the uh, ending would be dot py that uh, tells the computer that it's a Python script. Like if you type it into a text document, it's still Python code, but the computer doesn't know what to do with it. It just thinks it's a text document and it opens it. So yeah, and for uh, CSS, it's dot CSS, and for JavaScript, it's dot JS. For uh, HTML, it's dot HTML or dot HTML. So a lot of them uh, have their own. Things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like, do you, do you have, uh, for general text files, I think you can uh, type in a text uh, notepad or yeah. whatever. You do. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, I use this software called uh, Notepad Plus Plus. The Notepad and two plus symbols. You can just uh, search it up on the internet. That's a very good uh, you know, coding and 
edit a text editor. So you can save it to any file format and it automatically you know, reads like it, it knows it's Python code and it color codes each text. So if you make a function, it highlights that as blue. So it's easy for you to understand instead of just in text. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, one more person is asking, do you code on QBasic? QBasic? Uh, I, I don't know what, maybe is that another language? I'm not sure, but do you code on QBasic? I haven't heard of it, so. Okay. So, okay. Right. So you, you code uh, using HTML and uh, yeah. Python mostly? Mostly HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and, and I do Python too. Okay, so okay, I a, actually may have a code which I did recently. Hmm, let me check. Okay, so there is another question. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand. Uh, I have uh, this is Abyuk. So I have tried Scratch, but I can't move the hands and legs in the way I want, and the background is small. That's suppose okay. I'm cycling, I should use only that background. What can I do? So basically, I think he's having some issues with how to do things on scratch like moving the hands legs. yeah so scratch you know generally it's i mean if you want to move the hands and legs you have to draw the position like you know, like suppose you know the cat is uh, default scratch like you can draw the cat like this and the next position like this and uh, if it's walking say uh, change like this so it does this or it moves its legs so that creates the illusion of walking. You can actually move the hands, like it's an object, like it's not a 3D modeling or animating software, but yeah, you have to create like slides and tell the scratch program to change the slides. And basically the background, I'm not so sure, but try using a higher resolution image. Like it may be too small for the screen to even show, but that's usually okay. not the case. Okay, so I'm just looking at the uh... Other some other questions. Uh, okay, so now uh, I have this one. So is block coding valid for creating apps? Block coding. I'm yeah. not sure. Okay, block coding is basically what Scratch does. You know, you drag and drop these chunks of uh, code. So block coding, you can use it to create apps. That I, I forgot the name of it, but it's like a Honeycomb symbol, I'm, I'm not so sure, but you can create mobile phone app, Android apps using just block coding. So it, it is so simple. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, since I, I think a lot of you are interested uh, in this coding, I'm sure. Uh, so I have some more questions, uh, Akshay, but before that, I would like to uh, inform you guys that we are uh, planning for a free course uh, for about three days, which is about website building. So you will be able to build your own home uh, like any space that you have you can call it home right so you have your home uh, where you live now so that is a physical home but you will be taught how to create your own space online so we're calling it the uh, home on www so we will be uh, teaching you how to build uh, uh, your own space on the website and in that we'll be teaching you like some of the terms that actually mentioned like css uh, the style sheets uh, and uh, it's not, we won't be getting into the JavaScript that would be in the next level where it won't be, but you'll be creating your own website where it can open on your mobile phones. It can open on your uh, web browser and also you can share it with your friends and that process, uh, you'll be learning a lot about uh, building your website. So if you guys are interested, uh, I'm sure it is a free course anyway, uh, you can give it a try. So uh, once you are interested in building that uh, website and uh, interested about it, the next stages would be like what Akshay says, like you'll be learning to code and type in, like if you press on a login button, what should happen? You enter a password, then what should happen? Like that dynamic sort, sort of thing you the can basic, do. You know? Yes. So, uh, a good looking website. Yeah. So this uh, is going to happen on September 4th, 5th and 6th. So for three days, uh, two hours a day. So if you guys are interested, we'll be sharing you the link anyway. So uh, please uh, try attending this. And of course, uh, we have an, an expert educator who will be teaching you on building a website. Like uh, particularly, it will be like HTML that what Akshay was saying. It, you, you'll be handling HTML and CSS and you'll be hosting it to create your own uh, website. So yeah, that was the uh, brief thing. And there are a lot of other questions as well, uh, Akshay. I'll be reading it out. So what is the, um, okay. 
so what is the website for of creating the script uh, ragraman is asking what is the so, website of i don't have websites to create the script i use as i told not pat plus plus to create my script but uh, the website you can learn to create scripts is w3 school uh, let me just link that on that right now So here's the website. Okay. Thank you, Akshay. And uh, another person is asking, what is the app for learning Python? I don't know apps. As I said, W3 Sports. Okay. And there are apps on Play Store which you can get that teach you Python, but I haven't tried any of them. Okay. So Abhyukt is asking, can you please share your games? I think uh, he's interested in knowing about your games also. You have some link where you can. Ah, uh, uh, I. Yeah. So. Okay, I'll link my YouTube channel. Yes, you can. I guess that. you could. Uh, I'll upload my code there. Yes, so you can uh, link to your YouTube channel where they can, I'm sure, learn a lot from your YouTube channel as well. You can type in. So you guys can subscribe to Akshay's YouTube channel as well. Yes, there he is typed in. So uh, please uh, ask your questions now. Now the session is of course open to questions. So please ask in any questions that you want uh, to Akshay. Okay. So uh, I think uh, I have asked you uh, most of the questions that you have. So one of the questions that again, like when did you start to code? That is one of the questions that I think you I started asked. basically around sixth grade. When you were 11 years old? Yeah. Um, okay. So we have four years you've been coding. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, participants, we are waiting uh, for uh, your questions. If you ha have them, please do ask us. We are open for questions for another uh, five to 10 minutes. So you can type in uh, any questions, but it could be a technical question on uh, what he had done or it could be about, okay. So then another question, what language would you recommend for beginners? Yeah, as I uh, told in the presentation, Python is a very good language. But if you're going to start with coding, I prefer you go to MIT Scratch to do block coding. So once you understand how code works, you know, how it functions and you know, line by line, you can start with text coding with you know, Python. Uh, you can type in the MIT uh, Scratch link also, uh, uh, Akshay, if you want. Okay. And I also have a Discord server if you uh, guys have anything. And I you know, hear uh, technical doubts, or I, I may post my games there too. So, uh, shall I link it? Can, uh, share your link. So, okay. uh, on the Discord platform. Uh, let me share the MIT Scratch here too. Uh, there is another person asking what is the best programming language for web development? HTML. HTML? So, one of the best. And PHP also exists. Uh, PHP. PHP is basically another form of HTML, but you need uh, a hosting service that supports PHP too. But that's a uh, little more better. So you don't need to use JavaScript and uh, you can do a little more advanced uh, stuff with that. So let me. Uh, so this is uh, MIT Scratch. You can uh, put on the link. I, oh, guys, you have the link that uh, Akshay has shared. And uh, Raghuraman is asking how to develop a code typing. I'm understanding it. Is it a habit? Uh, can you uh, be clear on your question, Raghuraman? How to develop a code typing? What do you mean by that? How do you how to develop a code typing? So that is, uh, there is another question. Where can I learn Java, HTML, and other programs? Uh, like Jayant, I, like I told you, uh, we will be Mango Education does a lot of programs on coding. In fact, uh, Akshay attended uh, a program on Python. Uh, it was a six month program that he attended at yes. Mango Education. So, where it, the games that he That's built. That's where I learned most of my Python and created the game. Yes. So, uh, he, of course, so we will be running a lot of courses. We'll keep you posted where we will be teaching you coding. And, of course, we have uh, uh, expert educators who can help you out with coding. Uh, uh, like I told you, one of the courses that we are doing right now. Uh, uh, is the website building, which is on September 4, 5, and 6 for three days, two hours each. There, you wouldn't be focusing too much on coding, but you'll understand the basics of how a website works. 
and like you'll be learning about a bit about html and also css the styling sheet how do you arrange things in a website how do you want it to be in fact you'll be creating your own space where you can upload your blogs or upload your pictures and keep it like your own space so that course we will be doing it on september 4 5 and 6 and you're most welcome to attend it and it's also free the courses uh, you can sign up for it uh, free we will be sharing the link um and uh, yes so that is the answer to your question where can i learn java html and other programs of course we are there we'll be sharing the links with you where you can learn with us as well we'll be sharing you the links um okay and there's another question if you need to play games is there any particular website in which yes you can play the games and learn to code them so i don't know much but i'm sure that's uh Minecraft thing where you can you know both the character and you play the game as well. Search that up. Okay. So instead of Mango Education and online, how to code? Is there any other specific website? So I'm sure there are a lot of websites uh, on that that will teach you about how to code. I think one of the uh, uh, things that you shared is W three schools. Is it Akshay? Uh, yes. W three. Yeah. So I'm sure there are a lot of uh, 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 programs I, online. I actually found a link to that. Like you know, you both the character and you play the game at the same time. Okay, I think Akshay shared a, a game-related code. Uh, so there is Jonathan Franklin who says I've created a game, but I don't know how to publish it. GitHub. 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 Yeah. So again, uh, GitHub is uh, the place where you host your stuff online. And uh, as part of this course, remember I told you September four, five, and six, we will be helping you on hosting your website on online. So we'll be teaching you how to publish it online as well on Git, GitHub. So that will also be part of this uh, free course that we are offering. So GitHub is basically your own online stall where you can market your stuff and publish all your code for public to see. So you create a game, you put it on GitHub. If anyone wants, they can search it up and find it. You can share the link, uh, probably yeah. Akshay. Uh, yeah, sure. uh, Akshay will be sharing the link where to publish. Jonathan, yeah, it's People are asking about other resources for learning. As I told, W three sports is pretty. Good. I'll be sharing you the link to that course as well right now, and uh, you guys can register right away. I'll be sharing you the link. Just give me a moment. Um. Just trying to. Uh, Akshay, uh, I'll I'll send you a link on Discord, uh, and you can probably share it here in the link. Sure. Okay. You're on Discord, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. One of the questions is, um, Akshay. Uh, what is Minecraft that you mentioned something about? Minecraft is just a sandbox game. You have to pay to play, but the link that I posted, it's free. To, like, you code the character and you play the game, and you'll find out. Just you can open the website. Actually, I have shared you on Discord as a message. You can uh, post it uh, here in the chat box, can you? So uh, here's the link for the website building course. So uh, Akshay shared the uh, uh, the course that I was talking about, the building a website course. You can uh, go to this page and sign up for it. And uh, yes, we'll be learning uh, from there on on all various aspects. Yes. Uh, Minecraft related. Uh, uh, there was we had a uh, an entire session that was yeah. about Minecraft. Uh, that that would and, and Akshay is an expert. He's a pro in Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, five to six years now, actually, yeah. or four years. 
about 6 years so. about 6 years so i think uh, probably we can have another uh, a session on minecraft alone because that is a huge topic and uh, i'm sure akshay would not be happy if we gave him only 5 minutes to talk about it yeah. but uh, see babu we will uh, try to have another session and also we had another session earlier probably we can share you the link of yeah, uh, so that session where you can listen to what uh, they were discussing about and that too was uh, taken by me and attended to you so yes so uh, i do you guys if you have any questions please do ask we have another 5 minutes uh there is yeah, uh, i mean yeah getting up is uh, a free web hosting service but it doesn't support php and i know others but i have no idea if they are secure anymore uh yes mithun i we will send you the minecraft session link sure we will do that yes actually you can uh, like probably tell about the free domain and hosting thing other than github i mean, i'm getting the link right now. Yeah. Okay, so this is another of uh, the uh, hosting thing. You can customize the URL a bit, and you can host PHP too. But I don't think it's that secure. Proceed with your own. Okay. Are there any block coding sessions? Uh. Jonathan yes uh, we will be starting uh, a lot of uh, uh, coding based uh, workshops and courses uh, uh, from September so we will keep you posted and we have your email id with us and of course your whatsapp number we will be sending you uh, messages uh, from September onward we will be having a lot of courses the one that uh, was posted by akshay which is i am reposting it is about the one of the first courses that we want to do of course we have done a lot of courses in the past uh, like for example how to build your own game using python have arduino programming workshops and things like that and we will be starting uh, the courses from september we'll keep you posted and this uh, is our website the mango.ro where you can keep following up there also we'll be posting about our courses how to publish an app in a google play console well i don't know much cuz i've never even tried posting an app I didn't make an app that I want to publish, so I'm not sure on that. Okay, so we will uh, uh, try to get your uh, question answered by uh, uh, some other expert. We will uh, get back to you on that, Zoya Verma. We will uh, address that question later. How to design an app for free? Yeah, uh, that's the thing. There are uh, applications you can download, like. on windows to actually create android apps which are also block based coding but forgotten the name but so mit is one such an app where you can create them for free right mit yeah but that's not like you know exactly a mobile app okay so i don't know if you're talking about mobile app or windows apps so that's a bit probably uh, safe for both like you can yeah so uh, give me a second i windows I mean, just search free mobile app development, and you get tons of results. So I'm not sure which one, I, but I've used develop a, a app, uh, Akshay. Huh? What do you use? What do you use to create app? Uh, yeah, that thing I've forgotten because I created only one app. Okay, so probably one we can get the list from you later, and we can email yeah. it to them. Uh, we have their email address. We can send it by uh, email, and. Uh, This is another question. What mode should we choose in Minecraft? I think people are asking about Minecraft. What mode yeah, would you suggest for a beginner? Are you a beginner? Yeah, the session. Yeah. So I think probably uh, there is another session coming up for you and Rishi to uh, yeah. talk about these aspects of Minecraft. So yes, we will do another session, part two of Minecraft, and uh, Zayed, that question will be answered in that session. I hope. uh jonathan franklin says uh, i have developed in tinker yeah, so tinker is yeah it's it's something similar to scratch and you can yeah you can develop apps or games or animations in that too okay okay akshay i think uh, the, i think we are done our time is also up 
and uh, thank you so much all of you for uh, attending and i hope you found this useful i would uh, take this uh, opportunity to thank akshay as well I, i think i will ask you guys if you like the session please uh, do uh, uh, type in your thank you messages to akshay uh, i think i think it was a wonderful session i learned a lot i am not much into coding i am i'm mostly into astronomy but still i think i found this very very interesting and i hope uh, you guys uh, pick up coding and like akshay said the future uh, uh, is in favor of people who know to code so uh, it is uh, coding is no longer like uh, a luxury that it's not an option that you want to have uh, because w- once once uh, maybe about 30 years ago 20 years ago when we were in the school learning english was a very important skill so english was very important uh, for us to uh, do well in our careers or pick up job opportunities but right now now that uh, english access is spread pretty much everyone has got access to english language now the next big skill or the next big language that uh, or uh, the skill that is required is coding so i uh, i hope this session uh, uh, spoke a little bit about the scope of what is there uh, for coding akshay would you like to sum it up on uh, on this these lines for them yeah that's it so basically learn coding coding is for everyone and coding may help you in in your future and it will help you so i hope you uh, took some knowledge from this session and thank you all for so we are always available to uh, take in your doubts anytime uh, and, uh, and of course akshay will be reachable you know you can get back to us you can write us an email we have your email ids and of course uh, i'm hoping to uh, see you all uh, in the website building course where of course we will have another lovely session of learning and like some of you requested we will be having the mindshaft uh, session part 2 as well but we will uh, it might take a couple of weeks to schedule it but we will do it we'll keep you informed and so this uh, brings us to the end of the session thank you akshay uh, thank you participants have a good dinner and i have one more question that keeps coming up from karun uh, uh, okay if you have time you can answer it how do how to do yeah. animation for free free the animation blender is the best software open source you can get a lot of plugins i actually do blender animation you know quite a bit about it so you can type in that uh, uh, blender right yeah yeah so blender is an open source uh, uh, software that you can use for uh, animation akshay will type out the link for blender there it is Yeah, the blender dot org. So that is the answer for you, Karun and Jan Kumar. Yes, you will be getting a, a certificate for your website building course. Your participation is yes, certificate. Yes, not an assessment based certificate, but that you have acknowledging that you have uh, attended the uh, course. That certificate will be given. Yes, Jan, if you have a doubt, please do go ahead and ask. and jonathan you have some uh, doubt you you would like to type it out yes uh jan i'm still awaiting your doubt uh, if you have please do type in okay i think uh, that is it akshay thank you everybody that was a lovely session have a good dinner and a good night sleep and catch you again with some other interesting session and keep following as mango education thank you very much thank you everyone for thank you i think you guys can unmute yourself to say uh, uh